this movie was so much fun, yet a an unexpected emotional journey. So really, really well done balancing those two. And I love the ending. Yay! Well, what was it like to transform kind of your own life into a like screenplay? I mean, so much of all my screenplays have me in them. Yeah, I, I'm not creative enough to come up with everything 100% out of the blue. I Everything that I experience in some way goes into my writing because that's how I feel that I have a, a, an authentic insight into it and, and, and a connection into it. And it warms me up to, to, and I also work through, I process some of my tougher stuff through my work. And this is a perfect example of that. I, I feel like I, I had so much I wanted to talk about and I had so much I was still hurt about. And I had so much that I felt resentful wasn't out in our world of cinema yet. And sometimes I have to remind myself how young cinema is, you know, how young the movies really are, right? And I have this poster of of where I live, which is Beachwood Canyon under the Hollywood sign when it's Hollywood land. And it feels like it could be a thousand years ago, you know, but it's not, it's like a hundred years ago. Right. So yeah. sometimes I have to rem remind myself that, you know, cinema isn't like lame. It's just that women have only really been empowered to make movies very recently. It's kind of happening right now. So um, I, I felt a, a lot of fire and determination to to make a movie about egg freezing because it's so lonely and existential and harrowing. I love that. That's so funny because I literally was having that conversation with someone yesterday about how Hollywood is relatively young. So that's so that's so cool. Um, and then with this being your feature directorial debut, what did you learn from the experience that you want to bring into your next project? And then on the flip side, what did you learn that maybe we'll change your approach in the future? Ooh, that's such a good question. I, I learned to trust myself more as an actor that if I am feeling it and it feels real and it feels authentic, I need to trust that it is translating, you know? Cause I think there were several days there, especially up front where I was racked with guilt that I wasn't, nailing it the way that my actors were mm. because my head was in so many places. And the thing that helped me most was every single night, as soon as I, I was off shooting, I would just review all of my footage from the day. And then I would go, no, I got it. I got it. It's there. And to trust myself a little bit more rather than constantly beating myself up internally, thinking that I'm, that I'm sucking. Right. <laughs> so that's one thing. Um, Something that I would do differently. That's a great question. Um, you know what? Is this is this too like insidery transitions between scenes? Oh, is that yeah. too like driven? But I I just it's not something that I thought about previously. It's something that Julia, my cinematographer, opened my eyes to that we and my editor, Sandra, like we needed to find, like sometimes we were having to to create transitional stuff that wasn't there because I my brain wasn't always on it so on the next film and especially as I'm working on my writing my next film I'm trying to think what's a smart interesting way we can thread these together through visual transitions I love that answer because I never would have thought of that right I didn't go to film school and those are one of those things that I'm sure they teach you in film school they don't. <laughs> I did they don't you're good <laughs> Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> um, one of the things that I've always found very, very interesting is kind of how horror and comedy are unexpectedly two sides of the same coin because both of them have the setup and then either punchline or scare. So one of the things I'm curious about is what you're going to take from your experience with Scrambled that you want to take into the I Know What You Did Last Summer sequel script that you're working on. Oh my God, that's, I've never heard that. And that's brilliant. And I am just such a big horror fan. I grew up on horror films. Horror is really where my heart is. Um, I think what I learned from Scrambled big time is we got to be leaner, Leah. Leah, be leaner, stop overwriting everything. We had to cut an hour out of my assembly. It was two and a half hours long. And Lionsgate was like, we need it to be one and a half hours long. So I'm just crying and kicking and screaming in yeah. the editing bay 
cutting all of my favorite, I mean, not my favorite, but some very beautifully done moments by my actors, some, some entire characters that just crying, right? And I, I think with Jen, my director on I Know What You Did Last Summer, it's scarier if you're seeing it in the eyes and we're trusting our actors. We don't need to, because I love dialogue. I'm like, oh, look at this witty one-liner. Yeah. It's going to be a meme. It's going to be, you know, I'm like all obsessed with the pop culture aspects of it and the zeitgeist, the zeitgeisty way that we could spread it. But I have to remind myself that sometimes less is more. Mm. And sometimes we just want the strongest moments to be in subtext trust your audience they're gonna get it you don't need to spoon feed them is there anything you can tease for longtime fans that you're excited for them to see as a horror fan yourself for uh, i know you did last summer yeah i'm, try I'm trying to be careful <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to get in trouble with my studio i will tell you that your most your favorite most iconic line from the original <laughs> will be repurposed and brought back for the old school fans. I'm always thinking of you. I am one of you. It is safe in my hands. It is safe in Jen's hands. We are living the dream, working on the film. And there are so many Easter eggs and nods to the OG fans. So I hope that we don't let you down. I love that answer. And then we're going to pivot back to Scrambled. I love how it's so sarcasm based in the comedy because I am very sarcastic myself. So how did you kind of find that right sense of tone with the humor that not only brought out those comedic moments, but really showcased who Nellie is as a character, as well as the complications in her relationship? You know, people ask me a lot about tone and I just never really know if it's going to work. I'll be very honest. I never really know. I just don't know. I, but I do think that if you have stayed in a space that is so sincere, it's probably time that somebody punches you in the face. You know what I mean? Like, I know, as an audience member, I'm waiting. I want you to be leaned in when I'm going to slap you across the face. And that's sort of a device that I love as a, as a viewer. Um, and I And I talk a lot about how I really do think that you can be crying in real life you can be at your darkest moment and then something ridiculous happens and you're laughing. Or you could be laughing your ass off and then something heartbreaking happens and you're crying and life is messy. Life is not one genre. So I try to reflect that in my work, that it's all a mess. We're all just trying to survive. We're all fighting for our goddamn lives and we're trying to have some laughs in the process. So I never really know what's going to happen and I hope that it works. <laughs> I love that. And it definitely works for Scrambled. I could talk to you about this movie for like two more hours, but that hey, is time. <laughs> they are like keeping me moving today. I know we could be talking about I know we did last summer. I, I would love to talk to you more, Caitlin. Thank you. I would love that too. Thank you so much for talking to me today. And the movie is great. You did such a great job in like with all of the hats you wore with it. Yay. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I recommend it, but... <laughs> It's kind of a miracle that they let me do it all. So thank you to the overlords. <laughs>